Ezekiel smiles until she fell into her seat with a half-sob and closed her eyes, feeling defiled and dirty and weak. People the length of the car were eating. Papers rattled, tin tinkled, and into the stuffy heat came the strong smell of peanut butter. Elsa's stomach rolled and she gritted her teeth. She was resolving to do a half-dozen desperate things rather than go back in that women's room— when the train began to slow, the wheels pounded in a gradually lessening tempo, and the conductor poked his head in the door. Sioux Falls, he said. Her lunchbox under her arm and her telescope in her hand, Elsa followed the crowding passengers out to the step. Her stomach was still queasy. She felt that her face must be green with nausea, and the station platform was strange and busy, but she clinched her mind around the thought of a rest— a stop. On a bench up under the protecting eaves of the station she sat the full hour of the stopover, letting her stomach gradually settle and her muscles relax. After a long time she opened her shoebox and tentatively nibbled a sandwich. It made her feel better, and she ate another, then a little square of cheese, then a piece of cake. By the time her train was ready she could face the prospect of another three hundred miles." Afterward she found that the train no longer made her ill. Through the long, hot afternoon she sat and watched the immediate trackside flowing straight as a river backward, the horizon revolving in a slow circle. There were few trees now. Somewhere, while she had been sick, they had come to some sort of dividing line. Farms were more scattered, the buildings unpainted, and either ramshackle or staringly new. There were no hills, only a wide, bare, green-gold plain, pasture and unthrifty-looking cornfields. Once in a while they came to creeks or rivers flowing turgidly in sandy beds between strips of dusty cottonwoods. Mile after mile, hour after hour, past sod shanties with weeds growing green on their roofs, past unpainted shacks and ragged sheds, past windmills and discouraged plantings of saplings, past fields of wheat still meadow-green in the heat, past flocks of crows that flapped heavily off the wires as the train roared by, past herds of nondescript cattle with cowbirds sitting on their hip-bones. The sun went down redly behind a ridge of scattered buttes, throwing into black relief the broken skyline, and flushing a low range of hills beyond. Elsa ate from her lunchbox, watching the light die and the dark come up out of the ground. When they stopped at a town, the elevators loomed